Hi, I'm Ubai. Hi, Sandy. Yeah, nice to see you again. Uh, Thank you. I know you just came from Kenya a few uh, last week. No, actually, the week before last. The week before yeah, I've been, last I've been week. back for two weeks. For two weeks. Yeah, we uh, were all happy when you set out to go to Kenya. I remember telling you, go see how it's like. If you get a post, you know, say one for me, I'm coming. And, <laughs> and to visit the library, And to visit the library in Ugunja, yeah. exactly, exactly. So we know um, things changed really fast when you went there. And uh, maybe you can tell us what uh, your account of how things were so we can try to live through your story. Oh. Actually, um, yeah, things were, actually, things, things were very good and then things became very bad. Shifted very quickly. Mm -hmm. When I got to Kenya before the election, I uh, I was so happy about the situation in Kenya and how things were changing, the progress in the country, the rapid democratization, the economic development. So I actually made up my mind to go back to Kenya earlier than initially planned. I was planning to go to Kenya in 20, 2010 mm -hmm. to, to go back permanently, but seeing how things were moving very quickly and having a number of friends that uh, were interested in doing very many interesting things in Kenya. Mm -hmm. I decided that I'll go back sooner, than, uh, much earlier than I had initially okay. planned. And so I had actually made up my mind to go back to Kenya and perhaps remain there. And a lot of my decisions were based on the fact that that ODM, which was in the opposition, had promised a lot of change in the country. And it's the sort of change I wanted to be part of. Mm -hmm. So I arrived in Kenya, I stayed in Nairobi for a few days, then I went to Western Kenya to, um, to sort of to, to, to campaign and to vote. Now while in Western Kenya, after we'd done the campaigning for Mr. Krapo was running for that region, mm -hmm. and after I voted on the 27th, on the 28th, I, everybody was just happy because everything that had been predicted by the polls, there were many polling companies, including Stedman, which was popularly known to be owned by Mr. Kibaki's friends. They had all predicted that Raila Odinga was going to win and become president. So the public was prepared for a new government. Um, the exit polls on the voting day itself on the 27th of December also indicated that ODM, that's Raila's group, was winning. By the 28th in the morning, most of the counting had shown that uh, that out of a total of 14 million potential voters, the total number of registered voters were about 14 million. And of course, not all of them voted. It was about a 70% turnout. But out of the, um, out of all of these millions of voters, Raila was winning by more than a million. The gap between Raila and Kibaki was more than a million. So I was very happy, and I, and I figured, okay, it's time to actually go to Kisumu because I had a friend who was doing. Um, was one of the international observers in Kisumu, so I wanted to go and visit her. And I figured traveling would be fun, and, um, and we're just happy that there's going to be a new government. Because change is always good for Kenya. In fact, Kibaki did in many ways much better than Moi, because for 24 years, Moi ran a dictatorship. For five years, Kibaki ran a fairly democratic government that allowed a lot of energy to come out. And that energy that was unleashed by the switch from Moi's dictatorship to to Kibaki's more democratic approach led the country to very rapid economic growth. And under ODM we expected even a lot more because the Orange Democratic Movement had clearly indicated, they had mapped out a wonderful strategy on how to democratize the country. And they had gone around the country and talked to, to a lot of people, to virtually everybody in the country through media and through actual strong campaigns making a very clear promise to the unemployed youth. Kenya has about 2 million unemployed young people that are virtually no hope, okay? But they saw a lot of hope in the ODM program. So because ODM literally promised an arrangement where instead of 2.5% of the GDP going back to the constituencies, they said they'll take it to 60% so that you'd have cottage industries across the whole country. And that means people would be employed nationwide. Now this promise of employment was seen by many middle class people as campaign propaganda. But it turns out the youth, the unemployed people in the country did not see this as propaganda. They saw it as an actual promise of a better future. And so on the 28th of December when 
when they expected an announcement that Quebec, that uh, Raila has, has won, mm -hmm. there was no announcement. Right. By the 29th in the morning, mm -hmm. the uh, Kisumu, which is really where the, the initial the, the initial rebellion or kickoff of of, uh, of the revolt against Quebec is started, downtown Kisumu, was, the, the young people began burning downtown Kisumu. Mm -hmm. And this is on the 29th when they realized that something must be going on. Okay, that how come these announcements have not have not happened when in fact it's clear that Raila is winning? And then at the same time, because of the power of television and mobile phones, everybody was communicating with each other across the country, and the whole process was being televised. All the international observers were making their comments about how peaceful the election was. Um, the exit polls were indicating that Raila was ahead. The preliminary counts were indicating that Raila was ahead. And then the real big problem that, we, that I actually watched on TV, which I found quite interesting, and I was thinking of uh, this song, I think the song is by Public Enemy, that has the lyric, the revolution will not be televised. But this time we're actually watching the revolution televised. Because the, uh, the counting process was, you could see it on television. The head of the Electoral Commission, Mr. Kibuitu, the Kenya Electoral Commission, at one point, this is now, I think this was on the 30th, he announced that, he said that he cannot reach 42 polling stations. And he actually said on TV, they have switched off their telephone, their telephones, they are cooking the results. And he used the word cooking, and we're all watching this saying, okay, the country is going to burn. How can the head of the Electoral Commission use such language? He said they are cooking, they are cooking the results. I can't reach them, they have switched off their phones. So at that point, apparently that's the point at which, the, um, at which young men in Kisumu just began burning down businesses. Okay. Now, and of course, you see the, follow, the quick follow-up questions were, why would these people in Kisumu burn their own businesses? And a lot of people have asked me that both in Kenya and here. And the answer to me is sort of understandable to a significant degree. Those young unemployed men and women in Kisumu don't have any stake in the businesses in Kisumu because they don't, they don't have a sense that they may be employed next year or in 10 years. 